Let's imagine a society with multiple intelligent species like us humans on Earth. What species would it most likely be? Would they live on land like we do, or could parallel societies be formed in the water or in the air? Another question is whether different species and societies can coexist peacefully. Let us find out together today and here on Let's Imagine. Please consider subscribing. It's free, it's easy and you're signed up to see more imaginational craziness. First of all, we need to distinguish what we understand by intelligent. For humans, getting intelligent often means going to school, doing an apprenticeship for a job or studying at the university and ultimately get good grades as a measure for your personal intelligence. In general, it is a measure for cognitive or mental performance and mainly describes the ability to solve logical, linguistic, mathematical or sense-oriented problems. In this terms, we already have a lot of intelligent species on Earth. If we look into the oceans, we can find extraordinary life forms such as dolphins and octopus. Dolphins form complex social networks and interact to hunt, expel rivals and pass on their knowledge to the younger ones. On the other hand, we have octopus that show tremendous ability to solve logical problems, such as opening jars from the inside and using tools to get what they want. If we look into the air, we can find ravens and parrots. They have the ability to adapt to many different situations and even show empathy for each other. They also can learn phrases of our language and are able to understand correlations between them. How about some animal sounds? Can you do a red wolf? How about an owl? The pretty songbirds? How about a rooster? A big variety of intelligent life forms can also be found on land, especially among our closest relatives, the apes. For example, Coco, a gorilla that could understand 2,000 words of spoken language and was able to communicate with more than 1,000 learned hand signs, was believed to have an IQ between 75 and 95. The average IQ for humans on many tests is 100, and most people score somewhere between 85 and 150. But there are also intelligent land animals that are not related to us, such as elephants or the human's best friends, dogs and cats. In terms of elephants, they have the largest brain of any land animal and three times as many neurons as humans. Therefore, they can remember things for a very long time, for example, where to find a good water hole miles and miles away. Does this all sound familiar to you? Every described aspect of the somehow intelligent animals can be found in human behavior too. The problem is that we don't have the possibility to measure the animal's intelligence appropriately. For example, it would be difficult to do an IQ test with an octopus, as he cannot understand our self-made languages, signs and methods to describe real-world problems. Therefore, let's imagine some kind of super animals or species that would coexist with us together at the top of the food chain. These species would be able to understand our society, the markets or our legal system. Let's ignore the fact where they came from, if they evolved next to us or if they came as aliens from outer space or as lizardmen from the inner of the earth. Let's just address the fact that they are here and that they show similarities to humans or the life that we know in some way. Our life is mostly based on land, but about 71% of the surface area on earth is under sea level, so it is covered by ocean water. Therefore, it is most likely that a civilization could exist that lives in a maritime environment. Another living space is the atmosphere, which we as humans do not use that much either. Every intelligent species that lives in one of that spaces would have an impact on the environment, just as we do. Think about underwater factories that would pollute the oceans, or large farms that exploit the underwater life. Think about a civilization in the atmosphere that would block the sun from reaching the surface. And last but not least, think about the fact that species who exist side by side create interactions, no matter where they live. This means that they would inevitably have effects on each other. At this point, we have to remind ourselves that we are describing intelligent species that form a society similar to what we humans do. So we need to observe the socio-political options of what a coexistence could look like. 
The worst case in every consideration is war, even though it is also most likely that some difference would be solved that way. A few thousand years of human history show that wars were always there. The peaceful option would be some kind of global government that consists of representatives of every species. In this way we could ensure that the needs of all are taken into consideration. One concept that could work in this case is the world society. It changes the concept and the traditional understanding of the term world as it has to be restricted to the general sphere of life. We would need another understanding of world trade, world literature and citizens of the world. In almost all societies there are semantics for strangers and barbarians that allow us to classify those who are not members of the society. In this way societies also describe the social limits of their ability to integrate. The Roman Empire went beyond this initial situation of many societies in so far as it developed a jus gentium that went alongside the civil law order and allowed the social inclusion of any foreign population into the Roman Empire. Thus, for the first time a social organization was created which included every person in the world in one of the two statuses that formed the social structure of the Roman Empire. No one can say what the world would really look like in the end. The development of a peaceful society with multiple intelligent species is an almost endless concatenation of circumstances. What we can say though is that we need to take all these facts into consideration. The rest is up for your imagination.